The Progressive Liberal Party unveils an ambitious mortgage relief plan just hours after the Prime Minister blames the PLP for city markets instability. Bahamians must shudder at the thought of what potential disasters any new Christie government would bring to the country. A young man murdered last night and several others injured and big changes to traffic flow in New Providence. It's a significant change. We want everybody to be aware of what's happening. I'm Nikia DeVoe and this is NB12 Weekend. joining us this Sunday evening. It's been nearly four years since the Prime Minister promised to offer mortgage relief to struggling homeowners. And with that promise never realized, the PLP is unveiling its plan that it claims it will implement if it wins the next general election. Juan McCartney reports. Nikia, this plan was supposed to be delivered in Grand Bahama last night at a PLP event that got rained out. Today, the opposition delivered a comprehensive 10-point strategy it says would help struggling homeowners to get back on their feet. The first target is for the government to work with banks and other institutional lenders to agree to a 120-day moratorium on foreclosures to allow time to consult with the financial sector and to allow the crafting of legislation to put the rest of the plan in place. The next step would be to get the banks to agree to write off 100% of unpaid interest and fees for foreclosed mortgagers. The specifics are unclear, but the government also proposes to guarantee to pay some overdue interest on behalf of delinquent borrowers. Step three would be for the government to actively encourage a reduction in the interest rate of troubled mortgages to prime plus one, or 5.75% if we're talking in terms of today's rate. Step four would be to encourage banks to extend the loan repayment period for trouble mortgages. If banks and government can agree to those four steps, the PLP says it would guarantee interest payments for affected borrowers for five years through 2017. No word on what would happen after that, though. Step six, create a special fund into which borrowers would pay an annual service fee of one-half of one percent of their outstanding loan balances. The PLP says this fund would be used to help meet the obligations of those borrowers who cannot pay their interest through 2017. Step 7. Pass legislation necessary to ensure that homeowners who've accumulated savings in their pension funds can access it to save their homes from foreclosure. Step 8. Pass any legislation necessary to protect homeowners from foreclosure where they've already paid back more than a certain percentage of their mortgages. There's no specifics on that percentage, though. The PLP says this legislation would allow the Supreme Court to stop foreclosure on a home if a certain amount of that mortgage has been paid off. The PLP claims similar legislation is in place in the United Kingdom. Step 9 is to pass new legislation to give greater protection to borrowers in relation to interest, add-on charges, and other bank fees, and to regulate unregulated lenders. The PLP claims the new legislation would also bring stricter control and supervision of salary deductions, which it claims is being appallingly abused by certain financial institutions. The final step would be to extend the first homeowner's exemption from stamp duty to people who lost their first home in foreclosure, but are trying to buy a home once again. Of course, this plan covers a wide range of practices, some of which are already in place today, but some of which might be hard-pressed to get implemented. You can read more about this story in tomorrow's Nassau Guardian or at thenassauguardian.com. Reporting for NB12, I'm Juan McCartney. Prime Minister Hubert Ingram is condemning the Christie administration for approving the sale of city market food stores back in 2006, which he says resulted in the destruction of the long-standing supermarket chain that generations of Bahamians grew up with. Here is Charisma Robinson. At the opening of his party's Fox Hill constituency headquarters last night, Mr. Ingram addressed the current instability of city markets and promised employees of that five-store chain that the government will ensure that their rights and interests are protected. This past Friday, SuperValue owner Rupert Roberts and Bahamas Supermarkets President Mark Finlayson both confirmed that SuperValue was eyeing purchasing the ailing city market chain. 
However, the Super Value president said it was far too early to say what the final outcome will be. Meanwhile, more than 300 city market employees remained jittery over the security of their jobs and their pension funds. I know that city market employees are all very concerned about their pension. We're told that their pensions are secure. Further, we'll do the necessary to ensure that you are dealt with in full compliance with the law regarding any severance payment you are entitled to. It is a sad reality that hundreds of Bahamian shareholders lost their investment and hundreds of Bahamian workers now have unstable employment and face an uncertain future. It is at a minute, uh, it, is, it is at a minimum quite ironic that the same Perry Christie, who now says he puts Bahamians first, in 2006 turned down a Bahamian bid to purchase city market. In 2006, the Progressive Liberal Party approved Barbados shipping and trading, along with a small prominent Bahamian private investor group, to buy the company from the Winn-Dixie chain of supermarkets. Trinidad-based firm Neil Massey subsequently acquired the Barbadian company. But in the second year of operations, the new owners reported a net loss with negative cash flow, and the downward spiral began. The shares in city market began to be traded over the counter. When we left office in 2002, city market shares were worth $22.75. $22.75 each in 2002. That's the same year that Christie then came to office. Today, the shares in city market are not listed nor traded on the counter. Today, you can't give them shares away. <laughs> Dividends have long stopped. The company is insolvent. And the shares in the company are, in my opinion, worth less. The foreign company and their Bahamian co-shareholders paid a pretty penny for Bahamas supermarkets. And after they bought it, they had to inject many millions of dollars before they had to walk away from city market. The Prime Minister criticized the Christie administration for approving the sale of the company. Bahamians must shudder at the thought of what potential disasters any new Christie government would bring to the country in terms of making decisions that would affect the livelihoods, the shares, the retirement savings, and the pension funds of Bahamians. He said even as the FNM has been building a shareholding society, the PLP has been dismantling it and encouraging Bahamians not to buy shares in a quality company like the Awaki Port Development, which will make profits for its shareholders. Reporting for MB12, I'm Charisma Robinson. Meantime, Mr. Ingram urged Fox Hillians to support FNM candidate Chanel Ferguson as the successful businesswoman would provide good representation for them. She's community minded. She's a star athlete. She made Fox Hill proud. She made the Bahamas proud. She will continue to do so. She's one of Yena. She's one of Yena. She belonged to Yena. You know, when I went, when I went to my people, they embraced me. They had me there for seven times in God Bills, and when we back there for the, the eighth time. Give Chanel this one time, then I prove myself. The Prime Minister thanked former Fox Hill candidate Senator Dr. Jacinta Higgs for her hard work over the past five years. He said he is certain that Dr. Higgs will continue to make significant contributions to national development, especially in the areas of education, the advancement of Bahamian women and Bahamian culture. Well, in other news, a 20-year-old man was shot to death early yesterday morning during an altercation that left three others, including a 17-year-old girl, in hospital. Police said the fight took place shortly before 3 a.m. in the parking lot of a West Bay Street nightclub. Three of the victims were taken to hospital in ambulance, while the fourth by a private vehicle. However, police said the 20-year-old died shortly after he arrived at Princess Margaret Hospital. He has been identified only as a resident of Cumberbatch Alley off Andros Avenue. Police say he will officially be identified tomorrow. His death brings the murder count to 29 for the year. Last year, the same time, the murder count stood at 35. As for the other victims, up to last night, a man believed to be in his mid-20s was listed in critical condition, and the 19-year-old male and 17-year-old female were in stable condition. Anyone with information is asked to contact police immediately. 
Well, police taking close to a million dollars of dangerous drugs off the streets of New Providence in two separate busts last night. Police seized 33 kilograms of cocaine and a large quantity of cash from an Escalade in Twynham Heights shortly after 9 p.m. The drugs are worth more than half a million dollars. Four men ages 53, 32, 30 and 25 years were taken into custody. In the second incident, officers arrested a 37-year-old man of Lucky Heart Corner who was dri driving a white Chevy van around 9 last night after he was allegedly found in possession of 335 pounds of marijuana with a street value of $335,000.